Good evening all. It's your friend Sean Vanderlee here again. We're going to read a little poetry tonight. Tonight, A. Houseman from A Shropshire Lad. We're going to start with, uh, I don't think there's any real way of quantifying this uh, other than perhaps Google searches. It probably his most famous poem to an athlete dying young. We're going to go move on to one that's a little more obscure, but which really struck a chord with me as I was reading through his book today, looking for a good reading. So, without further ado, to an athlete dying young. The time you won your town the race, we chaired you through the marketplace. Man and boy stood cheering by, and home we brought you shoulder high. Today the road all runners come, shoulder high we bring you home, and set you at your threshold down, townsman of a stiller town. Smart lad to slip the times away from fields where glory does not stay, and early though the laurel grows, it wivers quicker than the rose. Eyes the shady night has shut, cannot see the record cut, and silence sounds no worth, worse than cheers after earth has stopped the ears. Now you will not swell the rout of lads that wore their honors out, runners whom renown outran, and the name died before the man. So set before its echoes fade, the fleet foot on the sill of shade, and hold to the low lintel up the still defended challenge cup. And round that early laureled head will flock to gaze the strengthless dead, and find unwithered on its curls the garland briefer than a girl's. Um... I don't know what it is. I've always been a guy who liked poetry. I think I read a lot with my mom when I was little. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. You have no idea. And uh, weirdly enough, it's sort of a funny thing in our day and time. It's, it's hard to imagine this, but my grandmother, who lived in not, most of her adult life in Nottingham, England, she would write poems. And I remember my mom has these somewhere, and I think she wrote in English and Gaelic. I remember seeing it once, and uh, it's just sort of a funny thing to think of, um, like essentially a coal miner's wife doing nowadays. But, uh, you know, in Irish culture, obviously poetry was always really, really big. They were from Western Ireland and grew up speaking Gaelic. So it's just sort of, it's hard to imagine someone, an adult even, poetry is so far out of the normal run of our lives now. It's hard to imagine an adult, you know, um, sitting down and writing poems for their own amusement. Um, but I think it's always been a worthwhile thing to do. And if you read a poem like that, which is uh, just listen to it, read it over and over. And it's essentially, it's in some ways, I think you, you know, it's perfect. You know, I mean, some prof literature professors are going to pick away at it or, you know, um, the people who are always sort of chasing, uh, chasing the newest intellectual fad or whatever you want to say, are going to say, oh, it's, you know, this form of poetry is so out of date and so anachronistic now and doesn't encounter, you know, whatever the current literary trend is, Freud, Marx, uh, gender studies, um, whatever, whatever is current in the universities, but it is a beautiful poem. Uh, has a very powerful sense of melancholy and touches on this concept of, I guess you could say, this sort of, is it an ancient Greek concept of sort of an early sleep, an early peaceful sleep as being a good way to go? <laughs> and um, the beautiful sort of tenderness of youth cut short. Townsman of a stiller town, what a way to describe being in a cemetery, so to speak, <laughs> right? Just amazing. Just read this poem. A 
And silence sounds no worse than cheers after earth has stopped the years. Brilliant. I love it. One of the, well, that's one of the reasons I do this um, on my YouTube for like the handful of people who watch it is to preserve these things of beauty that have been left behind and that I think are worthy objects of worship. Not just junk to fill your head, pastime, relax too, but items of beauty that are timeless. It might not be the same, but it could be translated into any other number of languages and would still connect, I'm sure, if you translate well. And there's value there. There always will be value there. And the contrast between something like this, which is, uh, you know, a perfect, perfectly crafted poem, a true piece of art, and the sort of things you often read today or watch on TV, has probably never been as stark. And I'm not going to say there was, hasn't always been pulp literature or pulp poetry, but it just strikes me that if you really wanted to watch something, I don't know, does MTV make TV shows anymore of the sort of truly that exploitative nature? If you watch that, compare that to this, just tell me what is a better use of your time any given day. Without further lecturing, this is poem 51 from a Shropshire Lad. So a lot of these don't have titles, they just have a number. I think, do all of them? I forget. But um, the book is called A Shropshire Lad. And I believe it was uh, printed in, uh, I believe, the late 19th century. Loitering with a vacant eye along the Grishin gallery and brooding on my heavy ill, I met a statue standing still. Still in marble stone stood he, and steadfastly he looked at me. Well met, I thought the look would say. We both were fashioned far away. We neither knew when we were young, these Londoners we live among. Still he stood and eyed me hard, an earnest and a grave regard. What lad, drooping with your lot, I too would be where I am not. I too survey that endless line of men whose thoughts are not as mine. Years ere you stood up from rest, on my neck the collar pressed. Years when you lay down your ill, I shall stand and bear it still. Courage, lad, tis not, lo not for long. Stand, quit you like stone, be strong. So I thought his look would say, and light on me my trouble lay. And I kept out in flesh and bone, manful, like the man of stone. No commentary needed. Just a beautiful poem. Well, let's go on to number 52. Far in a western Brooklyn that bred me long ago, the poplars stand and tremble by pools I used to know. There in the windless nighttime, the wanderer marveling why halts on the bridge to hearken how soft the poplars sigh. He hears, no more remembered, in fields where I was known. Here I lie down in London and turn to rest alone. There by the starlit fences, the wanderer halts and hears, my soul that lingers sighing about the glimmering weirs. Thank you for watching. I'll be back next time, maybe with more Houseman, maybe with Philip Larkin. Maybe with, who knows, back to Basho. Yeah, let me know. If you want to re me to read anything, let me know. We'll explore it. Put it in the comments. Drop me a line. I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. Till next time, stay warm. It's been cold. 
and we'll do some more poetry soon. Thank you.